Now, blood is moved through the vessels of the body, through the circulatory system, uh, by the pressure created by contraction of the heart. So cardiovascular health can be measured in part by measuring blood pressure. Too low, and the blood won't diffuse to all the tissues, won't be able to oxygenate or nourish all the tissues. Blood pressure is too high, and the wear and tear on the smaller, more delicate blood vessels will be too great, and that can damage the smaller vessels. So blood pressure is a measure of how hard the blood is pressing through the blood vessels and against the walls of the blood vessels. So if you have a blood vessel, there's blood, so this is a blood vessel, <laughs> blood vessel, and you've got blood running through it, it's going to be, you know, moving in one direction, but it's also going to be pressing outwards. That's why the blood vessel isn't like collapsed, because it's turgid because of this pressure exerted out on all, all the walls of the blood vessels. Think of a party of 100 people. So you have a party, and you could have that party in a tiny little living room. Let's say there's 100 people. Really nice party. So, you know, maybe when the pandemic's passed. <laughs> so you could put 100 people, so 100 people. You could try to squish them all into a living room, or you could put them in a nice big gymnasium. Where is there going to be more people pressure? 100 people in a living room or 100 people in a gymnasium? Well, there's going to be more people pressure in the living room. So there's this relationship between the size of the space, the number of people, and how much pressure there is. You could also think of a, a ball. So let's just say we have a basketball. And it's got air inside, so there's, there's air molecules pressing against the membrane of the ball, you can change the pressure, uh, the air pressure in that ball by compressing it down to the size of a tennis ball. That's going to increase the pressure. So this is more pressure. You can relieve the pressure by stretching it out to the size of a beach ball. going to be kind of flaccid, right, because there's not that much air in it, because you haven't changed the amount of air, you just stretched the membrane. So this is less pressure. Conversely, you can increase the pressure by taking that basketball and overfilling it until it has so much pressure that it pops, or you can decrease the pressure by deflating it and letting the air out, so changing the amount of molecules in there. And this is a good analogy for blood pressure, because you can change your blood pressure by changing the space that the blood has to move through or by changing the amount of blood. So blood pressure can be altered in a variety of ways. You can change the size of the blood vessels. You can contract the blood vessels. So these are vessels. Make them three-dimensional, right? They're the tubes. So there are muscles surrounding these blood vessels that can allow their diameter to contract or to dilate. This is going to increase blood pressure or, and in the case of dilation, decrease blood pressure. So contraction decrease, or increases blood pressure because you're narrowing, you're making a smaller space for the same amount of blood. That's kind of like when you've got a garden hose and you stick your thumb over the opening of the hose and then the water sprays out at a much higher pressure. That's because the same volume of water is trying to move through a smaller space. So that increases the pressure. So contracting your blood vessels is one way to increase blood pressure. Dilating them lowers blood pressure. Um, another way to control blood pressure is to control blood volume. So more blood, more blood equals higher blood pressure, so BP for short, and less blood equals lower blood pressure. 
Now, your body adjusts your blood pressure naturally, even just when you're healthy, just to accommodate different situations that you might find yourself in. So you can, your body will increase your blood pressure by contracting your blood vessels, or will increase your blood pressure by causing you, through your kidneys, causing you to retain more water. So that's increasing your blood volume. Your body will decrease your blood pressure naturally by dilating your blood vessels or by causing you to pee a lot to get rid of some of that blood volume. And these are ways to like, you know, accommodate fight or, you know, fight or flight. You might want to increase blood pressure to help move those muscles faster. Um, or you might want to lower blood pressure to rest and digest. But you can also, your blood pressure can change with health problems as well. So lost elasticity of arteries due to wear and tear. That can reduce blood pressure the same way that the worn out elastic on your yoga pants will drop the pressure that the pants are supposed to have around your waist in order to stay up. So that, elast that elasticity of those arteries can wear out over time and that will cause a loss of blood pressure blood pressure. Also clogging of arteries due to high cholesterol diet. That can cause a narrowing of the arteries and increase blood pressure. So you actually have two different blood pressures. You have your blood pressure while the heart contracts during systole, and then you have your blood pressure while the heart is relaxed during diastole. And by the way, every time a chamber is relaxed, it's filling with blood. So you have filling during relaxation and squeezing out of the blood during systole during contraction. Um, so your blood pressure during systole is obviously higher because the contracting heart put, puts pressure on the blood and that's what pushes it forward through the circulatory system. But it also puts pressure on the walls of the blood vessels. So your blood pressure during systole is higher than it is during diastole. But your blood pressure during diastole is not zero. If it were, then your, heart, your blood would stop moving every time your heart relaxed. And it doesn't, it moves slower, but it doesn't stop moving. So why is that? Why does the blood continue moving forward even when the heart is relaxed? What is creating the blood pressure during diastole? It's the nature of the elastic arteries that leave the heart, particularly the aorta, but the pulmonary trunk as well. So the large arteries they have, the, the walls of those arteries are filled with elastic fibers. And elastic fibers are really good for stretching and then recoiling. So when the blood, during, during systole, when the heart pumps, the elastic arteries absorb some of that pressure as the blood is being pushed out of the heart. And then, as the heart relaxes during diastole, they recoil and they put the, they, all that pressure they absorbed, they now exert back on the blood as they recoil. And that is what could, keeps the blood moving forward during diastole as the heart relaxes. So if it weren't for these elastic arteries, if, if these arteries were not elastic, not only would your blood pressure be zero during diastole while the heart relaxed, but your systolic pressure would be way, way higher they, they absorb some of the shock during systole through expanding, and then they exert it back during diastole. And so that prevents, that narrows the gap between the systolic pressure and the diastolic pressure. And that is really important for maintenance of your small and delicate blood vessels, like your small arteries, your capillaries, because those small and fragile blood vessels could not handle those dramatic fluctuations in blood pressure between diastole and systole. Uh, they, they need that narrower gap. They need some of that shock absorption or that pressure absorption that the elastic arteries give as the blood is initially leaving the heart. Now, a stiffening of the arteries is called arteriosclerosis, and it's just a normal part of aging. And what happens is that elasticity is lost in those elastic, those large elastic arteries that leave the heart. Um, and that, the, the consequence of that is more wear and tear on those smaller fragile arteries and capillary beds. But arteriosclerosis is accelerated by arthrosclerosis. Arthrosclerosis 
is when these fatty deposits from like a high cholesterol diet are deposited on the sides of the blood vessel walls and they, it creates these hard plaques and that prevents normal stretching of the arteries. Now blood pressure changes between diastole and systole, but it also changes throughout your body. Your blood pressure is highest, immediately leaving the heart, and then pressure is lost across distance. And that's because of friction, of resistance of the blood vessels. So that high pressure leaving the heart, it gets kind of diluted in a way. It gets lost as the blood travels farther and farther and farther away from the heart. So you have really high blood pressure, right, leaving the heart, and then very low blood pressure in the capillary beds, and almost back to zero as the blood returns to the heart. So here you can see, uh, right close to the heart, you can really see these dramatic fluctuations between systolic pressure and diastolic pressure. So you have systolic pressure is the high line, diastolic pressure is the low line. So if you are to measure a person's blood pressure, um, it's going to be different if you take your measurement in the person's leg versus their arm. So for consistency's sake, we've all agreed that blood pressure is, gets measured in the upper arm. So systolic pressure is always reported first, and then diastolic pressure. So we use a sphygmomanometer to measure blood pressure. And blood pressure values are reported in millimeters of mercury. That refers to how many millimeters of mercury that pressure would push up into a capillary tube. So for a healthy adult, we expect around 120 millimeters of mercury for systolic pressure. And around 75-ish millimeters of mercury for diastolic pressure. And this would be reported as 120 over 75 for blood pressure. So BP is blood pressure for short. Now, pulse pressure is the difference between the systolic pressure and the diastolic pressure. So pulse pressure, I'm going to indicate as PP for short. So pulse pressure equals systolic pressure minus diastolic pressure. So in this case it would be 120 minus 75. So that's going to be 45. So that's that would be a healthy person's pulse pressure. So the wider apart the systolic pressure and the diastolic pressure is the more wear and tear on the fragile small arteries of the body. So wider apart means a larger pulse pressure. So a high pulse pressure is not good. It means wear and tear on the arteries. Right. And then we have mean arterial pressure, which is indicated there. So I'll put that here. Mean arterial pressure, MAP for short. So mean arterial pressure is the average blood pressure across all time intervals. Not across the body, but again, across all time intervals. So, uh, you know, if it takes some time to go from diastole to systole to diastole again, what is the average pulse pressure across all diastole and systole? Now, you can't just take an average of diastole and systole because the heart spends more time relaxing than contracting. So you spend more time in diastole than systole. So we have to do, kind of do a fancy equation here. And it's going to be the diastolic pressure plus one third of the pulse pressure. All right, so that's gonna be, and remember pulse pressure is systolic pressure minus diastolic pressure. So we calculated pulse pressure already, and we already know diastolic pressure. So for our person here, that's going to be the diastolic pressure was what? 75 plus one third of the pulse pressure, which is 45, right? This was our pulse pressure. I'll just make that clearer here. 
So times 45. And I did calculate this out in advance because I'm not doing this in my head. That's going to be 90. 90. And these are all going to be in millimeters of mercury. Right? So millimeters, mercury, and all, all of this. The blood pressure is also in millimeters of mercury, right? So mean arterial pressure can indicate risks of risk for certain disorders like syncope or fainting. So if the average arterial, if the mean arteri arterial pressure is very low, it indicates that the tissues are probably not all getting all the oxygen that they need. You could also get kidney failure, edema, um, so very high art mean arterial pressures can also uh, create risk for several kinds of disorders. And that is all I have to say about physiology of the heart.